Good morning. Early morning. Black Barn Social Club. Got up about 3.30. Couldn't sleep. Stayed in the office for a little while and then decided to come out here and start a fire. Try to get my head wrapped around. One, it's cold, so I just, I wanted a fire. But uh, I wanted to get my head wrapped around this LS swap in the uh, in Pony Boy, the 69 Chevrolet C10. That's the sound of coffee being drank. I'm waiting on this thing to get warmed up. It takes a minute in these, uh, there's no blower on this. Uh, I thought about getting some of those fans that you put up top, but for right now, you just gotta kind of wait on this thing to, to warm up and then start radiating heat out. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I was, uh, I don't know what kind of special problem I have with uh, motivation, ADHD, whatever, but normally I have no issues thinking out a project and gathering up all the materials for a project. And if I can, if I can go ahead and get going on something. Well, I've still got the motivation, I'm good to go. But I, if I ever pause, if I ever stop, then I'll wait and second guess myself to death and not ever finish. And what I'm, what I'm talking about here is I have a perfectly running 69C10. It's the 350 automatic power steering. I mean, it, and the other day when I was cleaning out the shop, getting ready to put it in here, this is, it's in its final, and I'm sorry for the lights, but it's, uh, it's almost, you know, well, it's too early. But, uh, when I was getting it cleaned out and I brought it in here, I go outside, I had it parked out front. I go outside and I just barely touch the key and it just fires right up. And I have that moment where I'm like, why am I taking apart a perfectly good running truck? I mean, it fired right up. There's zero issues with it. So why would I do all that? Why would I take that apart, not enjoy it? all for the benefit of <clears throat> putting in this. This is a 5.3 out of a 2003 Chevrolet SSR. So this is the 5.3 with the aluminum block, aluminum heads, whatever, you know, it's, I don't think it's really much in horsepower. It may be 310, 300, something like that. I mean, it wasn't those, those, those little, the few years they made those things, they were never crazy hot, but they were, uh, you know, Chevrolet's version of that throwback pickup. Anyway, I got a really good donor motor here. 2003 with like 30,000 miles documented harness, everything, everything I need. So why would I, why would I take apart a perfectly good running truck just to do this? That's what I'm struggling with right now because it's, uh, it's April. 
fixing to be May, fixing to be cruising weather. I could just hold on to this for another, you know, few months, drive it through the summer, do this project this winter. But I think we all know what happens, you know, that, that keeps, that cycle keeps repeating itself and you don't ever pull the trigger. And so that's what I'm trying to talk myself through here is pulling the trigger. So I'm thinking about the, um, the benefits of the LS. I don't know, a lot of people say, well, it's, you know, fuel economy. I don't, I don't guess I care about that or else I wouldn't be driving some of these old vehicles anyway. I think dependability would be huge. The ability to just literally jump in and never have to worry about if it's gonna crank, never have to worry about if the carburetor's lost fuel or if you gotta, you know, sit there and let it prime or if you're gonna do that, how many, you know, how long's your battery gonna last while you're trying to get it, get the, you know, fuel back to the bowl. So I think dependability was, is big. Um, massive horsepower increase. Even though they're both technically 350s, it's still a massive horsepower increase. Even though the, the LS that I've got is, is one of the tame varieties. I'm gonna say the ability to, um, you know, go ahead and address the air conditioning. Get the, um, get the vintage air installed. These are those compressed sawdust logs and they, they're a go-to favorite for me just because they keep it, they keep it clean. Every now and then I'll, I'll let these get good and going and then I'll add actual real wood as I need it. So vintage air, that's a, uh, you know, that's a, that's a perk out of this. And then drivability. I mean, the, you know, when you, when you think about, you know, the, the next, the transmission that's currently mated with the LS, um, it's slipping me now. 4L60E. That transmission is going to give you an extra gear, which will make, you know, highway speeds a lot easier. A lot lower RPMs on the, on the engine. And, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm, I, I, I'm not one of those, I'm not doing it for the cool factor. There's, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that just did, um, you know, that's the only reason why they might do anything. And that's not me because I, I genuinely have an appreciation for the way, the nostalgia and, and, and keeping them that way. So for me, um, for me, that's not the driver as much as it's just focusing on drivability. And not that I couldn't do some of that other, those other improvements to it. I mean, I'm, I think about, I think about few of the upgrades that I'm, I'm going to have 
with the LS. One, you've got you've got the fact that it'd be fuel injected, so never having to uh, lose prime again. I've already talked about that. You've got this would be an opportunity to address the braking situation. Um, it has manual brakes. What I have over on the shelf and, and plan to do, as soon as I upgrade the, the motor, then I'm gonna wanna upgrade the stopping power and the stopping ability. So what I've got is a Willwood kit with uh, front disc, power, reservoir. Of course, that's got lowering spindles. That's a stylistic choice. So I've got the ability to to put some some really good brakes on this thing and never have to worry about you know not walking circles. You know, when I'm, I'm driving it now. My my brake my brake leg. I mean, you have to you have to really get on the brakes to stop in in today's traffic. So that's a and maybe that's a good point to stumble into you today's driving. Is, is a lot different than it was in the 50s, 60s, 70s. With everybody on their phone, everybody, you know, texting and replying to emails and podcasting or whatever they're doing. I mean, I see it everywhere. But if you're driving something like this that does not stop on a dime and, and people are whipping and zipping around you, while they're finishing their thesis or their, their term paper with their right thumb uh, or putting their makeup on or doing whatever they're doing, it's um, it can get nerve wracking. So the idea that, that, um, that you'd be taking the same time, you know, while this thing is down to improve the brakes, that's a big plus. I don't know. I mean, there's a couple other small things. I mean, people always talk about the smell of a of a of these older trucks. You always smell that fuel that because they just don't ever they don't burn as clean. So you got that that unburned fuel exhaust smell. I guess you you know some people might say that you've got the the fuel tank on these trucks is directly behind the driver's seat. It's inside the cab. A lot of people, if you know the trucks, you know that, but a lot of people that, that don't know the trucks wouldn't know that. But I mean, you're literally sitting with your back inches away from the gas tank. It used to be very normal. But um, this conversion will, will pull that tank out of the cab. It'll put it uh, underneath the truck kind of, you know, back behind the rear axle. So, I guess those are the things that I'm thinking about. Those are the, those are the benefits of doing it. And the only downside is taking, you know, the downtime, taking it out of commission. Another downside is just gonna be losing the originality of it, which I, I think I've addressed is not necessarily my concern anymore because I have, I have, I just love this truck so much. There's, there's, there's a weird connection for me in this truck that I haven't had with, I mean, I've had so many vehicles, so many. Um, you got if, if you if you've watched this channel for very long, you've seen a lot, but you haven't seen most because I wasn't even I wasn't videoing the majority of the vehicles I've had. But any rate, uh, this one I've just got an attachment to. I don't know why. Um, it just feels and fits like me, so I don't worry about trying to resell it. And, and again, I think, uh, I think that LS swaps have kind of become so normal that, that people almost expect when they pop the hood of something like this, they almost expect to see something different. 
and I may be wrong, please leave comments if I, if you feel like I am, but this seems like, I don't know, it seems like the right thing to do for me. And, and I think when I get this done, something else I think about, my son is 13 years old. And in the back of my mind, I feel like this is something if I tear into, I will have an opportunity to bring him out here, show him some stuff, learn together, get his help. And, uh, and then I'll see him, you know, at some point asking if he can drive it. I know I, I taught my daughter to drive it in his current state. We, we went to a parking lot and she, she drove around, had a smile on, uh, ear to ear. So, yeah, I think, um, I think there's an opportunity here to to uh, get something a little bit more drivable that my son will probably at some point ask me to take out. And right now, the way it is, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's many kids that, that could handle the, uh, the stopping. So, that's uh that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm just getting my mind wrapped around all this stuff and trying to make sure I guess I'm trying to to gas myself up to go ahead and and uh, pull the trigger. So You guys be good. I think the sun is starting to uh to rise. The sky's getting a little bit lighter out there. We will, uh, we will talk soon. Y'all be good.